Welcome back. So we're going to talk about some techniques that can partially resolve the principal agent problem. Here's the thing. You can never totally fix this. Right? Well, you know what? You can. If the owner and the agent is the same person, like in a sole proprietorship where it's an entrepreneur working by his or herself, then I guess there is no principal agent problem in that, in that particular case. Or if it's a sole proprietorship where there's some employees, but there's no other managers, it's just one manager over like three other employees, and that person is also the owner, then I guess you actually have solved the principal agent problem. But you know, those kinds of circumstances really have no relevance to anything we're talking about in venture capital. So for venture capital firms and firms with external investors, including publicly traded firms on like the New York Stock Exchange, we don't really have a way to totally resolve the principal agent problem, but we can mitigate some of those risks. Okay? And so the first one is we talk about pre-contractual risks. Remember, we talked about some of the um, hidden characteristics that you faced before you made the agreement. You know, we talked about pre-contractual information asymmetry. Well, how do we resolve some of that? Okay. So the first thing is you can do is you can do signaling. Okay. Signaling means that you provide the right kind of message that shows confidence. It shows that you, as the entrepreneur, know what you're doing. And signaling specifically is a mechanism that is used normally by the entrepreneurs. Okay. So signaling can mean that you provide kind of confidential information because you're showing a degree of trust but also a degree of confidence in what you're doing. And some of that uh, confidential information can be contracts that you sign with suppliers or customers, um, providing a customer list. There is a degree of moral hazard when you do that though, right? Um, I did hear of a circumstance where an entrepreneur um, as an act of signaling to show a degree of confidence, potential trust with the venture partner group gave away his customer list to the VCs, and what did they do? They took that customer list, they provided it to a rival firm that was actually in their investment portfolio, and the person making uh, the investment pitch, or the potential entrepreneur, lost the entire business. So there is a degree of moral hazard. You've got to be careful with the signaling. You've got to show enough that shows your confidence, but not give away so much that it puts you at a disadvantage, right? Because you know, an investment with a venture capital group is supposed to be a partnership, not a parasitic relationship. Okay. Um, also, if you write for certain deal structures, that can show confidence. So if you make your returns tied to a specific growth target, that indicates that you're confident that you will achieve those growth targets. Um, other things that can be you know, signaling is talking about your education and how your education you know, is relate, related or is relevant to the kind of business that you're doing. Same thing with experience. By discussing the extensive experience you have, either as an entrepreneur or in that industry, that's a good example of signaling. Um, also talking about the personal income that you have invested, showing that you've got skin in the game. These are all things that can generate a degree of trust, because again, not all contracts are complete, and make the venture capitalist more confident to invest in you, the entrepreneur. There's also self-selection, and this is kind of from the venture capitalist perspective. They can provide different alternatives for entrepreneurs to select, so they can provide different types of contracts. Uh, again, if the contract, for example, expects a certain growth target, if you don't think that you're going to achieve that growth target, then you as the entrepreneur are going to step back and say, no, I don't want to invest with that person. So that just kind of weeds some people out right off the get-go. They can provide certain kinds of financing that may appeal to certain kinds of entrepreneurs and not to others. Um, they can also discuss uh, things that um, indicate the level of risk to the entrepreneur. A very confident entrepreneur may be willing to take more risks, so would a crazy one. Um, an entrepreneur that is less confident in their potential venture may be willing to take fewer risks. So the venture capital also has ways and terms that can prevent entrepreneurs that are not a suitable match for their group from actually um, applying. Okay, so that's your self-selection. Okay, now let's say great, you know, you've, you've given the right signals, you've got the right self-selection, you have been, you know, selected for investment, you the entrepreneur. So post-agreement, okay, this is the stuff that we can look at for the post-contractual asymmetry or also preventing those moral hazards that can occur. So the first one is bonding. Okay? Bonding basically means that you align the agent's interests with those of the principal. Okay? In other words, you make sure 
the way that you write, you as the venture capitalist, write the contracts for the entrepreneur, they only make money if you're making money. Okay, that can partially resolve this problem. And then stay, um, pardon me, after the bonding, you've also got um, monitoring. Okay, monitoring includes things like uh, veto rights, making sure that you as the investment company can prevent an entrepreneur from um, bringing on new investors, um, investing in certain things. Um, you can make sure that the venture capital group or uh, your venture capital firm has board positions so that they can direct the entrepreneur strategy and you can demand extensive reporting from your entrepreneur. Okay? You know, I need a re financial report every week, every month, every year. Every year is not really extensive, so every week, every month. Um, you can just pop in right, and actually make sure they're doing what they should be doing. So these are some examples of um, how post-contract you can make sure you as the venture capitalist can make sure that your entrepreneur is doing what they promised to do. So in our next video, we're going to talk about some different investment strategies that venture capital groups look at. Um, by understanding this, you, know, you can also engage in a degree of self-selection so that you can do a, you as the entrepreneur can do a better job of picking the investment group that is right for you, the entrepreneur. As always, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you comment down below. Um, and please subscribe. And here's my question for you. What do you think would be a good signal that you as an entrepreneur would use to attract venture capital groups to you? And what kinds of self-selection items would you as a venture capital investor use to make sure that you got the entrepreneur that was right for your firm? I'll see you in the next video.